Hi everyone, so my hair today looks like the mum from my parents' Aurelians. Whoop. And I'm also wearing a black bra under this top. Definitely shouldn't have done that. But I hope you are well. Thank you so much for joining me. And um, today I thought I'd do like a little two in one. Um, I haven't done a live Q&A since last year's daily edit. So I thought I'd do like a little live Q&A, chatty, how you doing, how I'm doing, all that kind of stuff. And then I thought at the same time I would throw some makeup on my face and instead of just using the usuals, which if you've watched any of my videos over the last like three, four months, have stayed exactly the same. <laughs> I thought I would share with you some old things slash older things that I haven't used in a couple of months or in some cases a couple of years. So we're like digging back through the archives, using some old favorites. I do have like one new thing here. It's the NARS palette that I picked up when I was in New York. Um, this comes out in the UK in March. Heads up, it's called the Afterglow palette and it's just utterly brilliant, saw so Katie Jane Hughes use it, had to have it. Um, so yeah, hopefully we'll do like a slightly different makeup look, maybe a little bit of colour and let's get chatting. So the first thing that I'm going to do is prime with the VDL Lumi Layer Primer and then I'm going to go in with the Pat McGrath, the Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Foundation. I have this in the shade Light 5 and then Light Medium 14. I'm just going to do a blend of the two to find my perfect match. And the first question comes from Cornflower and they ask, how are you? I feel like no one really stops to ask each other this anymore. That's a really nice question. There was a few of those actually, just people saying like, how are you? How are you doing? Um, I can't give you like a real time update because we would have just got back from Sri Lanka when this video goes live and I'm doing a little bit of a pre-filming magic and anticipating that I might be quite tired and uh, maybe a little bit jet lagged after that. But at the time of filming this video, which is like late January, I'd say I'm really good. Um, I feel like we had a really slow start to the year. Um, obviously we came back from New York, we went to New York for New Year's which was amazing, can highly recommend it, it was like the best New Year's I'll probably like ever have in my life, it was so 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 fun. Gosh I really love that primer. Um, so we came back and obviously like you're not really jet lagged from New York but there's, there's like a little bit of tiredness there, it's quite like a full on trip, we did like so much walking and drinking and eating. And it's like a five hour time difference. We had an indirect flight on the way back. So like we were a little bit tired. I'm just taking like one pump of each of those and we'll see how that goes. Whoa, deep, oh, I might be able to make it work. And then when we got back, Mark had flu, like proper full on flu. Like the poor guy was really, really not well. And not well for about a week. So in our like 11 years of being together, I don't think I've ever seen him that unwell. Like, yeah, he was a poorly, Egg. So I feel like the beginning of the year was just like looking after him, making sure he was okay and just yeah being quite quiet and like not really us like getting out much which was quite nice because we didn't really have that period over Christmas and um, we went back to Birmingham to see Mark's family for Christmas and then like rushed back here to do a bit of Christmas with my family went straight to New York so it was nice in a way to have that rest obviously not nice that Mark was unwell um but yeah so we had a slow start to the year and I feel like I really needed that and I feel like now we're at the end of January I'm like okay cool like I feel well rested I'm ready to like get this year started and I'm just really I'm excited about this year I feel like this year could be a really big year for us like a lot of changes so yeah thank you I'm well <laughs> now that foundation's blended in I actually feel like that works quite well color wise and it is really gorgeous on the skin. Oh, I've got a hair, I've got a hair. Oh, so annoying. Kind of loving that base combination. Um, For concealer, I've got the Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Magic Away concealer. I have it in the shade three and four. I think I'm gonna use three. Um, It's a really nice concealer. I've just been using my RMS Beauty. Oh, it's hard to get open though. Oh, jeez. Oh no. I hope my dentist wasn't watching this. <laughs> the next question comes from Vanessa Estima. And this was like the most asked question. Like I say 80% of questions were, related to this and it is how are the plans to buy a house slash move going um I think his last was it like last summer I did a blog post all about how we're like saving to buy a house and people are wondering like what's the deal you still haven't moved um so hopefully like this is gonna be our year I'm feeling very positive just trying to be optimistic about it um Mark and I have actually lived in our flat for almost five years years now which is wild like I think we're just having too much of a good time here like the plan was to always live here for maybe like three years and then like upgrade to more of like a bigger house like somewhere with a garden 
um, but we just like love our life here. We love the location of where we live. We've obviously like made changes to the flat and we, we love living here. We have ultimately a really like nice life, a nice like routine and a nice setup going here. So I think we sort of put it off for a while because the faff of moving is just like grim. <laughs> We're obviously in a very privileged and lucky position to even be on the housing property market in the UK. It's definitely not easy to get on, that is for sure. So I'm not complaining about that, but like everyone knows like the hassle of moving, whether you're like renting or whether you own the property, it's expensive and ultimately just quite a faff. And because I work from home, that makes it quite tricky because it's also my like workplace and base and our flat, like all those things rolled together. Jesus, I don't think my skin has looked this good in yonks. Oh, amazing. But yes, we have been saving up and we would we would love to move. Like there's nothing wrong with where we live. We we love it, but we would love to have a little bit more space for like hopefully the next chapter in our lives. We'd love to have a garden. Like that would be amazing. It would be so nice just to have like next door neighbors instead of like flat neighbors. So hopefully this is the year like we're not being too hard on ourselves with like time scales and things like that like these things take time, like we haven't seen anything that we would wanna buy yet. Nobody's bought our house yet. So hopefully by the end of the year, we will be in a new place or like be in the process of getting a new place, but we just don't really like know the exact timings of that. So I'd say it's going well in terms of like, we're still really happy where we are. We're in no like rush to move. I'd say our saving is going well. Like me and Mark are both the biggest fan of premium bonds. We just love like premium bond, like prize day when it comes, I have the little app and I'm like, woo, I keep winning prizes guys, it's great. Um, I'll link the blog post that I did down below for you if you wanna like check out what we've been doing to try and save some pennies. But yeah, ultimately it's good. I feel optimistic about this year and I'm very like excited for whatever, whatever happens next. Now for the rest of my base, I have a couple of products here. I have the Kevin Aquan the Sculpting Powder. This is in the shade Medium. I have the Milk Makeup, the Matte Bronzer. This is in the shade Baked. Um, if I do want a blush, I've got the Milk Makeup. This is the Lip and Cheek in the shade Work. And then I've also got the Chanel Balm Essential. This is in the shade Sculpting. So lots of nice, like, creamy products. And then this contour powder, which I haven't used in yonks. Let's get that on my face. The next question comes from Rebecca Marden, and she has some really good questions, so thanks for that, Becca. And she asks, would you consider moving anywhere else or are you settled in Brighton for good? Um, I think we're settled in Brighton for good, guys, like, or at least for, like, now, the next sort of 10, 15 years. And we just love it down here. Like, obviously, it's where I was born. It's where I grew up. Um, so I've got family down here, like school friends down here. And it is so nice to have family like round the corner. Like my parents live about 15 minute drive away from where we are now. Um, and obviously when we lived in London, we had like no family anywhere near us. And we kind of just had a few work friends and obviously like Lily and Rich, but that was sort of it. Um, and just down here, it just, everything is like, slotted into place, we're able to spend time with my family, which I obviously adore and Mark gets on so well with them. Like I genuinely think they prefer him to me and like, I'm okay with that. Um, he gets on so well with my granddad as well. They're like as thick as thieves. They're like mending men. They love fixing things. Um, so they have that in common and they're always like sharing books and tools and stuff, which is really cute. So they live not too far away as well. Like my aunties, my uncles, cousins, like all that kind of stuff. And we're still like a three hour-ish drive away from Mark's family and his friends who live up by Birmingham. So we're kind of not a million miles away from everyone. And we've just got a good, good like social life, a good like mix down here. My old housemate goes out with Mark's old housemate and they live just like five minutes up the road. Like tonight we're going around there for dinner. I think we're gonna have mac and cheese. We have a film club. Um, we're close to Gatwick Airport so we can go visit our friends in Amsterdam very easily. Like we we love it like there's so many reasons to live in Brighton and Hove one of them is certainly not affordable <laughs> housing um but aside from that it's such great vibes it has everything that we love in a place we like love the beach we love the countryside that's not too far away and yeah it's just great vibes down here so I can't see us moving anytime soon Pip reads 
asks Renault regrets slash advice. Um, so if you don't know, when we first purchased our property, it was a bit of a mess, <laughs> to be fair. That's why we were able to afford it because it had the space, like we loved the space. Like this was one of the bigger flats that we went to go see when we like were looking at properties, but it was, yeah, it, it needed it needed some work. <laughs> some of it was quite major work. Um, some of the rooms needed replastering. Um, we needed to rewire the whole house. We needed to do a new kitchen, a new bathroom. So like quite like big renovations. Um, and other, other rooms just needed like a quick lick of paint. So it was sort of somewhere in the middle. We were quite naive. We hadn't renovated a place before. And I think we didn't really realize the true cost of that and the true amount of time that's needed. I think my only regret was like letting it get on top of me and like trying to do so much ourselves whilst we were both still working full time. We didn't actually even live in Brighton at the time. We were living in London and we'd come down on a Friday night, sleep on my parents' floor, then come to the flat for the weekend and try and like scrape off wallpaper or like paint a room or paint woodwork. And it was just so full on. And I found that time of my life kind of stressful. And I just wish I'd like paused to enjoy it more. Like ultimately this was our first property or on the property ladder. Like it was a really exciting time. Um, and I think I just got myself a bit like in a tiz about that. Cause let me tell you, good tradespeople are booked up. I was like calling people like, hello, please can you help us like paint this room? And people were like, yeah, no, sorry. I'm like booked up for the next six months. So I think I would have been a bit more realistic about like timings that good people <laughs> are quite often booked up quite far into the future. Um, and also just, I think advice wise, I would just say, take your time. Like instead of moving in and spending like a shed ton of money, in one go and like have doing it all it's actually quite nice like we've done it quite slowly over those five years like the bathroom we only did two years ago and obviously that just works better with money because you don't have to have such like a big pot to scoop into you straight away by the way i'm skipping blush for now i'm just going to go in with a tiny bit of highlight um and also it provides you with a bit of time and space to like live in your new home and like work out how do you move in a room like how does the room function best for you like does the light look really pretty in one corner like would you like to get a mirror for that corner like it's just it's a nice project to do over like a long period of time and who knows what our next place would be but we would both love to take on like a project and just do it over like years and years and years because yeah I feel like you get a really great renovation in that way and that you don't make as many mistakes that you want to rectify later on because you like know the property and you know your lives within it a little bit more so that would be my advice good luck for brows i've got the hourglass this is the arch brow shaping gel this is in the shade clear and i'm just gonna like scooch those through my brows whilst answering a question from jack days thank you so much you always like comment and leave love on my various different social medias i see you thank you that's very kind of you um, they ask, will there be another book? Also keep up with the amazing work on your blog and YouTube channel. Oh, that's very nice. Thank you very much for that. Um, will there be another book? <laughs> My editor actually emailed me like two months ago and was like, hey, just like wondering. Oh no, it was my book agent, not my editor. Uh, she was just like, just wondering like if you'd like want to do another book anytime soon. And I was just like, Abby, no, no, I don't think I would. I loved writing my book and that was in 2018? Yeah, 2018. I basically spent nine months of that year writing an edited life and I loved doing it. It was so fun to do something different. It was so fun to have like that sort of challenge and do something which ultimately I never, ever, ever, ever thought I would get the chance to do. And I'm very lucky to have had that opportunity. Um, but it, it took up so much time. Like obviously it was like 80,000 words. And then it's not even just the writing the book, it was all the design that went into it. Um, I really like threw myself into a book tour. I really wanted to promote the book like as much as I could. I think I ended up doing about 23 different like Q and A's and book tour dates like all around the country. I did one in Amsterdam, I did one in Toronto, I did one in LA, like there's just been a lot. Like it, it was a lot and it was amazing. I feel like it changed so much for me like it really like took things to the next level and I'm so grateful for everyone who supported it and purchased the book thank you um but there's not really much more I can say about organization at this point in time I feel like I've written 80,000 words on it those are all my tips like that's that's the whole shebang so there's not an edited life to 
in me right now and I'm, I'm not sure there ever will be but it was such an experience and one that I'm very grateful for. So for eyeshadow I have this NARS Afterglow palette which is just like I mean hello inspired by the pink. Um, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. I'm, I kind of want to try this like warm like corally peachy pink. It's like the type of shade that I would love on my lips but why not like try it on the eyes. I want to try something a little bit different. I've been meaning to use this for the last couple of days, but like, you know when you don't want to put it on because you've got stuff to do and you don't want to do your makeup in a way that you you don't like it, but it's fine. We're, we're experimenting today. Um, so I'm going to put this on whilst I answer a question from Kath Adamson. And she asks, how do you think your industry is changing? And what do you see yourself doing long term? Um, I think the industry is changing like massively. Like I've been doing this now for 10 years, this year marks my like 10th year on YouTube, the 10th year of doing my blog, and things have changed so much since those days. Like back in the day, blogs weren't really monetized. This wasn't really an industry. It was just like a hobby for people in their bedrooms, a way of like connecting with people that had similar interests to you. It was almost like the next step on from a chat room. That's sort of always how I viewed my blog. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's changed massively in so many different ways. It, it is an industry now, like people earn money from it, people make a living from it, like I do. And that's, that's something that I never imagined was possible. Like it, it wasn't possible when I started. I think ultimately because of that, because it is an industry that is money involved, I think that does breed some issues with authenticity, which like I totally get, like as well as putting these videos up, like I'm a consumer, like I watch YouTube all the time. I'm always scrolling through my feed. Like it works. Like I quite often buy things that I see other people recommending. So like I'm part of that as well as also like putting that out. And I think it's a really like tricky thing to balance, but I think there are so many incredible creators out there that are managing to balance the fact that it's their job at this current time, but then also being really respectful about it and having like incredible ethics about it. I'm not sure that really answers your question, but I feel like that's a topic that I could talk about for like a solid 45 minutes. And then to answer your question of what do I see myself doing long term? Um, this is always a tricky one. And if I say like, I picture myself doing YouTube long term, there's gonna be people that just like roll their eyes and they're just like, yeah, no, that's not gonna happen. But I've been making videos now for like 10 years and it's kind of still here. It hasn't gone anywhere. It hasn't dwindled in numbers. If anything, the audience on YouTube is like bigger than ever. So I don't know if it will still be YouTube. I don't know if it will still be a blog. I don't know if it will still be an Instagram, like who knows what this will turn into, but I feel like whatever I end up doing, I will be creating something for somewhere, <laughs> possibly for someone, possibly still for myself. Like I really, really don't know. And that's that's always a thing that I've like struggled with, with this, like I'm a Virgo, I'm a planner, I love to organize. I'd love to have this like solid five year plan, but you kind of can't, you sort of have to like ride the waves, the high ones and the low ones. And you have to just kind of find that passion in your belly and like still continue on with that. So yeah, I don't know what I'll be doing in the future. That's kind of weird. That's just something that I've like had to make peace with. Holy moly, I love this color on my eyes. And um, I don't want to ruin it by like putting anything else on. I feel like I might mess it up. So I'm just going to go in. I have the Glossier Play. These are like all of the eyeliners I purchased. I purchased an absolute shed load. And I don't know whether to do like a little bit of something, something with like an orange or do I go in with the like pink? I think the orange. Yeah, that looks fun. Yellow? No. This is the shade Jumbo. And I think I'm just going to like put it along my lash line and like try and wing it out a little bit and like maybe blend it in KJH style. Um, the next question is from Amy Scotty and she asks, are you still happy on YouTube? And I thought about this question and ultimately like, yes, I am happy. Like... For me, if I wasn't happy on YouTube, I wouldn't still be making videos. Like making videos, it feels like, I can imagine like watching it, it feels like a really easy thing. Like, oh, any, anyone could do that. And anyone can, but it takes like energy and passion and time and like production. And ultimately, I think if you're not happy, it really, really shows in video. And so for me, if I'm having a day where I like don't wanna make a YouTube video, I will try and do other things, put that to the bottom of the list and like move my days around because I feel like low energy in a YouTube video sometimes isn't the most fun thing to watch 
in the world. Um, and I feel like I've, I'm really happy with like my space in the YouTube ecosystem. Um, I think like some of the bigger creators who have like millions and millions of followers, um, they can sometimes be like a bit shafted by the algorithms and changes and those sorts of things. But like for me, I'm just kind of happily like pottering along. Like I feel like over the years I've managed to accumulate somehow, I don't know how, a really incredible audience, aka you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video and sticking with me. Um, who we have similar interests and I might put up a cooking video, maybe that's not your style, but the next one is like an organization video and that is your style. So I feel like I've created this space where I can kind of like dip into various different subjects. And some of you guys like might not be crazy about that particular subject, but you might like the other thing I talk about. And I feel really lucky that I don't feel like pigeonholed into one thing. I can do a video where I'm like kind of doing my makeup, but kind of just chatting to you. And then my next video might be a cooking one, or maybe I like recreate a Bon Appetit video. Like I'm really lucky that I just get to make videos about my current passions and interests at that time and have an audience that is so kind and so supportive. So yeah, I'm, I'm kind of like over the moon with, with YouTube right now. Okay, this eyeliner is gonna take a bit of time. So let's just take a little quick break. <laughs> Not sure you can see any of that, but I did just put a little like flick in the corner of the orange and then I also went under the eyes a little bit and blended it out a little bit with that pink shade. And I'm kind of loving that color. Um, anyway, the next thing I'm gonna do is mascara, which is down here. Um, I don't have any mascaras that I don't use. I literally have the Lancome, Giorgio Armani, done. Uh, so I'm gonna use the Lancome Missia Big, I think today. Um, now on to the personal section. Um, Evie Bunce asks, what are your travel plans for the year? And this was a really frequently asked question as well. Um, so currently at the time of filming, we have yet to go to Sri Lanka, but Mark and I are going to Sri Lanka for, I think it's about 11 days. I think the vlog should be up at the time that this video goes up. Um, so check out my channel, because it's probably like my last video that went live. Um, I'm so, so, so excited for that. And then aside from that, that's kind of our like big trip. And it just worked out that we found some pretty reasonable flights. It's like a good time of year to visit. It's a good time of year, like work-wise for me to go. Like it's kind of a little bit quieter during like January and February for like sponsorship stuff. So yeah, that was our kind of big trip. During like February, March, April, um, some of our best friends are getting married. So we've got like the hen do, the stag do, the wedding. Um, and then we've got quite like quiet months during like June, July, August, like that could be a time that we might be looking to move or like house hunting or something like that. So we wanted to have a bit more time in our schedules. Um, I might go away for like three, four nights maybe with my girlfriends just to celebrate us all turning 30. Uh, we didn't like do anything big or get any presents or anything like that for each other's birthdays because we said we're going on a nice little like girls long weekend. So I might do that. Hopefully we get that booked sometime soon. Um, my cousin is getting married in Lake Como at the end of August. So me and my family have got like a little Airbnb out there. So that's at the end of August. And then I think that's all we've got booked for the rest of the year. I think that's kind of it. So if we do anything, it'll be probably like shorter, more like long weekend trips that we'd make like city guides out of and stuff like that. Um, oh, I'm forgetting something. At the end of April, I've got my family's like annual holiday in the Lake District. So my family go to the Lake District every year and Mark's family go to Croyd Bay once a year and we take it in turns to like join them each on those holidays. So this is my family year and we're going to the Lake District at the end of April. And I can't wait because I love going to the Lake District. So more sort of like UK breaks where possible and just like short little long weekends. So we'll probably go to Amsterdam at some point to see our friends. Um, but yeah, I think that's kind of it for the year. Gonna save those pennies for that house. <laughs> Rian John 4 asks, what is your current fitness regime and why did you stop at the gym? Um, so my current fitness regime is very much like spin, reformer, pilates, that's it. That's like all I do. I'm either doing one or I'm doing the other. And because I work from home, I lead a very sedentary life, uh, just like pottering around my house. I try and work out like most weekdays, like, Occasionally I miss the class and I'm still in bed at 7 a.m. Whoops. Which is actually why I tend to do more evening classes now. I was always like about like getting it out of the way, doing it nice and early, doing it first thing in the morning. But I have to say, I really do enjoy an evening workout class. Um, so most days of the week, if I can, if I'm here in Brighton, I will, sorry, I've got a hair, it's drawing me mad. 
But if I'm here in Brighton, I will try and do a spin or a reformer class in the evening. Reformer I do about twice a week, spin I do about three times a week, and then tend to like rest at the weekend. I just love it. Um, why did I stop the gym? I have no motivation when it comes to fitness. And so I would personally struggle just going to the gym on my own with like no one telling me what to do or telling me off if I don't do it. Um, and so I had a personal trainer and ultimately that is like super pricey. And around that time I started doing reformer, loved reformer, loved how much laying down it involved. And it was just cheaper. And also the gym that I went to, I would have to drive to like 15 minutes there, 15 minutes back. And the spin place and the reformer place we can walk to in like 10 minutes. So kind of out of convenience, out of money, those two things combined, um, that's kind of why I stopped the gym. I really loved it though. And like, I'm not sure I will ever be as fit <laughs> as when I was going to the gym regularly and doing like HIIT and resistance training. Like I had a butt, I had a butt guys. <laughs> I do not have a butt now. It got me in brilliant shape and I loved it at the time. But yeah, for now, spin, reformer, love it. The final question I'm gonna answer whilst I put on my lipstick, what shall I, what shall I do? Oh, I might do this. This is Nars Chelsea Girl. Uh, I had to decant it into a little tub because it was a real mess in the bullet, but I feel like it could go quite nicely with this look and I might put a little bit of blush on as well. We'll see. Um, but the final question is one that I was asked also quite a lot. And Iva ever asks, would you like to have kids someday? Um, of course people are like interested. I, I get it. Like I just turned 30. I talk about it with my friends all the time. Like obviously my family are very like pro <laughs> Mark and I having kids. And the answer to that question is like, yes. And I feel like last year I had a moment where I was just like, oh my word, do I even wanna have kids? I feel very lucky to be like living the life that I'm currently living. And we have such a brilliant routine. We have so much fun. And I was just like, oh, kids are really, they're really gonna throw a spanner into this. Um, but I feel like this year I've like made peace we would really, really love to have kids at some point if that is possible for us. We don't know. So who knows? But yeah, I would love, I would love to have a family. I would love my parents to be grandparents. Like that gets me a bit most just thinking about that. For my grandparents to be great grandparents, like that'd be insane. And obviously for Mark to be a dad, like, oh my word, like whenever Mark comes within distance of a child that's like under two years of age, I'm just like, oh, my ovaries like practically melt. He is so good with kids, he would be the best, best dad. I just know that he would. Um, so in our, in our current setup that we've got, I, I don't think kids will happen anytime soon, but like, who knows in the future, like you never know with these things. I think it would be a life experience that I would really like to have if I can. So we'll see with that one. I've got the Milk Makeup. This is the lip and cheek in the shade work. And I am just, I'm just gonna do just a little. Ah, there you go. That's a bit better, isn't it? And I was lying when I said that was the last question because there was one final question. I haven't written down on my notes who asked this, but it made me laugh. Um, who is your favorite BA chef? And what is your favorite BA video? Come on, who do you think my favorite chef is? It's Claire, of course it's Claire. She's a Virgo and she just gives out like the most intensely Virgo vibes that I really feel. Like, I feel like we're on the same level. Of course I did the BA like Instagram stories filter, the what like BA chef are you until, until I got her, of course. Um, and then my favorite BA video, I do love like an It's Alive with Brad, but I love the vintage ones with Vinny and I love a gourmet mate. Although any video with Gabby is just kind of adorable and I'm sort of like in love with Delaney as well. Like, oof, mm. <laughs> Oh, fun fact, we also saw Molly when we were in New York twice. That makes it sound like I was stalking her. We were at a restaurant and she walked past, she got groceries and then she walked back. Hence why I saw her twice. No, I did not go say hi to her because she was just getting groceries. Like she didn't need to be bothered. I doubt she wanted someone like shoving a camera in her face at that exact moment. Um, but yeah, it was very cool. No, she didn't have tuna. I know, devastated. Anyways, um, I have to say, I love this makeup. I've got hair on my face, which has been driving me mad for approximately 25 minutes now. Um, but I'm loving the pink. I put on blush. Um, it, but it's kind of not pink though, is it? It's like, it's like a peachy pink. It's basically the perfect eyeshadow to wear if you have green eyes. I'm considering this palette for a little like one week wearing colorful eyeshadow video like I did with the, um, the Huda Beauty, the Mercury Retrograde palette. I will link that up there for you. Um, but thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your questions. Thank you 
so much for your continued support and just like love it is much appreciated i feel like this is a really like nice safe warm encouraging place on the internet and i am forever grateful for that so thank you so much for watching i hope you are having a brilliant month so far and i will see you soon bye